Uh, welcome to Real Vision, everyone. Uh, my name is Santiago Velez, the co-founder of Block Digital Corporation. And today I'm very excited to have with us Mr. Josh Williams, the CEO and co-founder of Forte Labs. Welcome. Hi, Santiago. Nice to, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, I, absolutely. My pleasure. I've been very excited to have this interview. Uh, a lot of people on Twitter have been uh, anxiously awaiting. Uh, it, you, you, you guys have been running, I think, in stealth mode for a while. So <laughs> there's a lot of curiosity out there on what you're working yeah. on. Uh, but before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey uh, into this market and uh, how you got into gaming and then maybe uh, digital assets or, or the, the uh, decentralized space? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, well, I've been building um, technology and startups for, for a long time um, and, you know, been very fortunate with it. Um, work with great people. got really lucky along the way. Sort of career spans fintech and then gaming um, and build some um, platforms for uh, game development, um, which became, you know, really big and got to work with, you know, great um, sort of luminaries in the space. Um and uh, really got interested in um, blockchain and what blockchain could enable in the world of gaming and sort of um, financial and economic opportunities for people around the world um, through games, um, you know, several years ago and um, started researching and, and uh, we started Forte um, about three years ago, um, started building out the technology and really going deep on, you know, what's possible in the world of gaming. Uh, that's that's great. Okay, so let's let's peel a little bit uh, behind the curtain here and see w what's going on. First of all, can you tell us a little bit about the gaming market? Uh, I think there's sure. a segment of the population that still consider this, you know, uh, a child, like a very infant market. Where totally. in reality, it's probably one of the biggest content markets out there. Can you tell us totally. a little bit about that. No, you're right. Yeah, like when I was growing up, I I loved games, you know, as a kid, but it was. A very niche thing. It was a very nerdy thing, you know. Uh, didn't make you a cool kid in school if you were playing games, um, video games. But uh, but now it's a global phenomenon. You know, games are pretty ubiquitous. There's about three billion people uh, in the world that play games uh, every month. It's like two point eight billion people um, a month that play games. Um, it's a huge industry. It's like a two trillion dollar uh, industry by by market cap. Um, does about two hundred billion dollars a year in revenue um, from from players playing games globally and it's just been growing tremendously you know up from um, you know tens of billions of dollars uh, a year when I was a kid um, so just growing um, like crazy and, and really is a global phenomenon now where people spend you know more and more time playing games and you see these cultural sort of phenomenons too where games are enmeshed in people's lives um, there's a game called Fortnite where you know, you might have seen the news um, several months ago. There's a virtual concert um, has been held in the game a couple of times with uh, most recently an artist named Travis Scott. You know, he's like a hip hop artist. And there's you know a, a huge virtual concert in the game where, you know, over 12 million people uh, attended the concert um, and just had this great virtual experience. So it's sort of becoming a not only a huge industry, but um, a cultural phenomenon, too. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, you just anecdotally in my own family, we're, we're all gamers. We, we game together sometimes. Yeah. You know, I have three girls of, of varying uh, ages, that, but they're all young. And I can say they're absolutely, they're digitally native. Uh, right. But what I, what's what's different between they and say my wife casually gaming on, on a mobile phone or, or whatever, is that, um, that that digitally native aspect really expresses itself in how they interact with other people in so many ways. One of them economically in their yeah. trading engines uh, and, mm -hmm. and and in the way that they value objects, goods, and services. It's, totally. it's fundamentally different than uh, myself. I, I would consider myself kind of a condition to fiat, denominating right. the thing in fiat, right? And, right, and right. They, they, they don't even understand what that means. <laughs> right, right, totally, totally. No, it's crazy. Yeah, people um, you know, they really care about the games that they play right um you spend a lot of time in it um you might be cooperating with friends you, you form friendships in games you might be competing with people uh, you might just be having a great experience in a in a virtual world so you really care about these things um and you're right there's you know in in basically every top game today there's a concept of virtual currencies and virtual goods that people um you know can use um the real you know, the thing that's been missing in, in games and, you know, what I'm so excited about 
seeing starting to emerge now is the idea of really owning those goods, like having property rights for these digital goods, digital assets that you care about in the games that you play um, as, as a player and really pulling in real economies, you know, market economies and, and property rights into into games and creating you know, really rich and robust economies, giving people all the economic opportunities that, that comes along with that instead of games where they spend so much time already today. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, zooming out, if I connect this to the kind of revolution that was Bitcoin originally, mm -hmm. it was this idea that we have a shared state, right? Yeah. In, in the case of a, a monetary network or accounting, you're, you're basically just verifying that there's no double spend. Uh, right. But when you take yep. that principle and you apply it to digital assets in general, I think you get what, what you're talking about here, which is yeah. property rights, right? The, That's the totally idea right. of code enforced claims on digital abstractions. So could you get a little bit down into how uh, or what Forte Labs is doing around that and cultivating that? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So the idea is really, um, again, let people who already spend, you know, hours playing games and, you know, a lot of time, um, um, a lot of energy and a lot of money um, in games really have property rights and economic opportunities, you know, opportunities for income um, inside of inside of games. Uh, the question is, you know, how do you do that? Or like, why has it happened? Why hasn't that happened yet in games? And um, the reason it hasn't happened is because it, it's, it's a really hard problem. There wasn't um, an enabling technology until Bitcoin and blockchain more generally came around, you know, the virtual currencies and the virtual goods in games are they're digital. So they have to live in a, in a database. Right. Um, and so the question is who, who controls that database? Where does that database sit? Who can write to it? Right. Um, and if it's, you know, just a game publisher or just some company that, um, you know, controls the database, then players can't really own any of the assets in the database. They can use them, you know, they can have some, some rights, but they, they can't truly own the digital goods there. So what blockchain enables is basically, um, a shared state, as you said, you know, a, a global database of, you know, these digital goods that is verified and secured by a global network as opposed to, you know, just one trusted entity or one or one company. Um, and, you know, Bitcoin was a, a really a revolution um, in in that, so, you know, this this the idea of a distributed database or, you know, a database that anyone could write to is an old idea in computer science. But you know, there was some really sort of seminal work um, 30, 35 years ago um, in computer science around actually the impossibility, like an impossibility result of having a, a global, da global database that anyone could write to. And the idea that um, you could ever have a stable consensus around the state of that database. But what Bitcoin's core innovation was really was a way to change the assumptions of, of that proof. And instead of letting just anyone write to the database, basically having a cost uh, to, to write to the database. And by introducing that cost, you eliminate things like civil attacks, you know, so the ability for people to fraudulently, you know, write to the database or to try to flood the system with sort of um, rights that aren't, you know, attempts to write to the database that aren't valid. And so, you know, what, what we're trying to do is basically take this revolution in the underlying economic technology, you know, blockchain, and just make it really easy for game developers who aren't, you know, digital ledger technology experts, aren't blockchain experts, make it really easy for them to integrate this stuff into games and create real economies inside of their games. So again, get trading going with, with, with players, um, and give people property rights and unlock all the, all of the sort of market and economic opportunities that, uh, that are created from doing that. I hope you enjoyed this clip and will decide to join us for the rest of the interview, among many others on realvision.com forward slash crypto. The crypto channel is 100% free. You just have to sign up. Look forward to seeing you there.